Half the Battle is back. It's me, Daniel Levy, your host. And man, we got a great edition of Half the Battle today. We're going to be talking to Antonina Shevchenko. She's actually the sister of the UFC's Valentina Shevchenko. And man, she's a multiple-time Muay Thai world champion, kickboxing world champion. She's unbelievable. And also, I mean, we got Scott Kent, the Lion Fight CEO. We got Kai Hollenbeck, who's one of the best American Muay Thai practitioners in the game. I'm talking about a dude that went the distance with the great Nikki Holskin. And then also, we're going to be talking to Mark Holst. This is a guy that fought in the UFC, and now he's fighting in Muay Thai. And I'm telling you what, these guys that went from MMA to Muay Thai, they're transitioning really well. I mean, Mark Holst knocked out. Kevin Ross. Uh, it's crazy how it works, man. So this is the special Lion Fight 30 edition of Half the Battle. You can watch Lion Fight 30 July 8th, Friday on Axis TV. It's going to be amazing. And joining me on this very special Lion Fight edition of Half the Battle is the Lion CEO, Scott Ken. Scott, welcome back to Half the Battle, man. Hey, it's great to be back. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. It's my pleasure as always. And man, we got a hell of a card Foxwoods once again. It's going to be on Access TV. And dude, we got Hollenbeck taking on Holst. And I mean, Kai Hollenbeck is no slouch. Kai comes to fight. Kai is experienced. I mean, we're talking about a guy who went the distance with Nyeki Holskin. He's knocked dudes out with spinning back fists and elbows. I mean, he's done it all, but Mark Holst is no slouch either. Yeah, Kai's a beast. You know, I think he's probably the best American Muay Thai fighter out there. He's, he's got such a an exciting fighting style and Mark's fought so many guys, you know, Canadian champion, uh, fought in the UFC for a bit, kind of went into retirement and came back out, still had to fire. And when we offered him this opportunity to fight Kai, you know, he didn't, he didn't flinch at all. He's, he's a guy that's going to bring it. So it's going to be a great main event for sure. Oh, Holst has a, a brass pair, as we like to say. I mean, this is a guy, like you mentioned, he fought in the UFC. He was an MMA fighter. He retired for a little bit. He comes into kickboxing, and he has knockout victories over names of the sport, such as Kevin Ross. Yeah, he beat Kevin. Uh, you know, he fought on our card. He fought Cosmo Alexander, who's a, a multi-time world champion. You know, he lost the fight, but he gave him everything he had. And I think it kind of reaffirmed his, his love for stand-up fighting and that he wasn't an MMA fighter and that this is a great opportunity for him. Yeah, and uh, Scott, you mentioned how he fought Cosmo Alexander and everyone was counting him out. Everyone that I spoke to said, oh, Cosmo's going to knock him out in the first round. And it, w it ended up going the full distance. Yeah, he went uh, and he took some shots, you know, and he, he really pushed Cosmo. And remember, Cosmo just beat... John Wayne Parr on, on one of our cards, an unanimous decision. And John's a, a 10 time world champion. So, you know, uh, Mark is a guy that's not going to back down from any challenge. And Kai is a guy that, you know, he'll take three punches to get one in. And, uh, it's a super fight that we're going to have. And, and I can't wait to see this one for sure. Yeah, and what do you think the ceiling is on guys like this? I mean, they're both so tough, but the thing about it is they're entertaining. They're fan-friendly. They go for the knockout. They come to fight. Yeah, I think that's the challenge when we do matchmaking. You know, rather than have six very technical Muay Thai fights that are decisions, historically the American audience wants to see people fight. You know, and, and you look at boxing, you look at... Uh, mixed martial arts, they want to see a fight. And I think that's why a fight like this is, is attractive to a really broad audience, not just particular Muay Thai fans. No, absolutely. No doubt about it. And I mean, that's exactly what we expect to see at Lion Fight 30. And also on the card, the debut of Antonina Shevchenko. Obviously, we know she's the sister of Valentina Shevchenko. And man, Antonina has so much experience. She's been competing since she was eight years old. You know, it's funny. I just spoke to her. I was like, how does your body hold up after all those years? And I mean, she's still going strong. She truly believes that this is the best version of Antonina Shevchenko there's ever been. Yeah, I think she's really starting to hit her stride. You know, now that people, and especially female Muay Thai, is getting such a broad audience. She had a lot of kickboxing background. The fact that she can focus now specifically on Muay Thai, unlike her sister that's, you know, doing doing uh, MMA with the UFC, 
this is what she loves. This is what her passion is. Uh, I think her record is 36 and one. And I, I asked her, I said, what, what happened with the one fight? And she said, well, I was fighting the promoter's wife. And I said, did you win the fight? And she kind of rolled her eyes and, uh, got the impression that she kind of got, the. uh, uh, got the worst end of a bad decision there. Right. So she's, uh, we were thrilled to have her, you know, to sign her. She's going to join uh, Jarena Bars. At, you know, Jarena's our 145-pound champion. Antonina's fighting at 135. We've got Iman Barlow we just signed. We'll be fighting on the same car as Jarena in uh, September 2nd at Foxwoods. And uh, we've got a couple other surprises we're going to announce here within the next couple of weeks as far as female Muay Thai. You know, it's funny, Scott, because I spoke with Antonina and I mentioned, you know, I think it's important for every fighter to take that first loss, that first setback, you know, come back, evolve, reassess, learn from your mistakes. And it's funny, most uh, fighters agree with me. For her, she doesn't feel like she ever lost. Yeah, yeah, that was certainly the impression I had. Uh, you know, unfortunately, sometimes you fight for some of these promotions, especially in countries where, you know, you never know what the decision is. I know there's a lot of a lot of countries and a lot of promotions where if you don't knock the fighter out, you know, you're going to lose the fight. And, uh, and that's certainly not the case with Lions Fight. We've got great commissions everywhere we fought. Uh, they assign the judges and uh uh, you know, to see fighters in their prime like Antonina and Jarena with so many fights and Iman Barlow. Iman Barlow's got, I think, 80-some fights. I mean, it's incredible that these females are getting up into the numbers where a lot of these historical men Muay Thai fighters have been for years. So uh, sports come a long way. Oh, uh, yeah, and absolutely. And to backtrack a little bit, Scott, I just want to say how incredible of an event Lion Fight 29 was. I mean, you had Travis Clay with that vicious knockout, and he didn't just knock out some scrub. He went out there against a guy who's known for getting back up from getting dropped, a guy who's known for pushing that pace and fighting to the bitter end. And Travis Clay went out there and put him away. Yeah, Julio Pena, he's tough as nails. You know, he's come back from fights where he has been literally on one leg and you know won the fight with a spinning back fist for travis play a young kid like this to come in and fight a veteran uh to knock him out and and on that card we had we had six fights and five knockouts so from a fan standpoint uh it was certainly one of the most exciting cards we've ever put together uh ace of ten pal another performance that really struck me as a young kid who really hit his stride, was able to beat Bryce Lawrence, who's a very tough guy, and literally took his game to another level at that card, I felt. No, absolutely. And it's funny you bring up how it was one of your most exciting cards of all time, because for me, I've never watched a boring edition of Lion Fight. You know what I mean, Scott? Yeah, that's kind of the challenge we have. You know, Christine Toledo did our matchmaking for several years. She's still kind of helping us. Uh, I was involved a lot more in the matchmaking for that last fight. Uh, but you bring in world-class Muay Thai fighters, and you just never know what's going to happen. Uh, uh, Reagan Ursel came in. You know, and Joe Nadawatz just plowed through everybody. He did come up and wait. Uh, uh, so it wasn't for Joe's title, but Reagan, what a great knockout that was. That was, that was a highlight reel knockout as well. Oh, no doubt about it. And it's funny, you know, everyone's acting like, oh, it's a short notice replacement. You know, they're feeding uh, Smoking Joe an easy fight. And we all saw what happened. Anything can happen when two uh, men or women step inside that ring. Yeah, there are no easy fights. And we've kind of built ourselves and take a lot of pride in the fact. I remember Keith Kaiser one time, he said, the nice thing about lion fight is you never know if the blue or the red corner is going to win because they're so evenly matched. And we don't, if, if you know, I, I have some young fighters and they'll take a loss and they'll be real discouraged. And said, you know, all of our fighters have losses. That's just the sport. You never know. You could be dominating a fight and in the fifth round, you get caught with a spinning back elbow or you get cut and the fight's over. That's, that's the reality of this particular fighting stuff. Yeah, absolutely. And all the great fighters have to experience defeat at some point or another. You know, it's not like one of these sports. You know, we talked about this last time you were on the show where some guys, they have these padded records. There, The thing with the Muay Thai fighters is they want to take on the toughest challenges all the time. 
Yeah, I think that's one of the things that's so attractive about our sport. And I think when we talked before, we talked about boxing, where you'll get these guys where, you know, the promoters will build their fighters, put them in against C-level fighters, build a record to 25-0, and 0, and then hopefully cash in with a television contract. You know, that's, that's just not the way we operate. We want to see the best fighters out there. We're bringing in the best from Thailand, from Europe from uh, Australia. We've got a fighter coming in from Australia in September. You know, it's, it's something that uh, uh, we just think from a, from a fan standpoint, you cannot get a more exciting fighting style. Uh, no doubt about it. And Scott, I'm going to keep lobbying for uh, an Atlanta event. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> so real quick, before we get out of here, I mean, off the top of your head, what do you think is going to be fight of the night at lion Fight Thirty? I think Antonina and Annabelle has that potential. You know, obviously any fight Kai Hollenbeck is in is going to be a war. Uh, you know, I, I wish I had a better feel for it. I think any one of the six fights could be a potential fight of the night, but I'm looking for some fireworks from the ladies this time. Yeah, and it all goes down Friday, July 8th on Access TV at Foxwoods Resort and Casino. Scott, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me right here, right now on Half the Battle. If there's anything else you'd like to add or plug, now's the time, man. Well, thank you, and, and Half the Battle, you guys have been big supporters of us. We appreciate it. Uh, you know, we love the support. We're kind of going in a, a uh, swimming upstream against the MMA media, but folks like yourself have always carved out a place for us, and we appreciate that, and and as a fight fan, I can't wait for July 8th. Absolutely. Thanks again, Scott, and I hope you have a great day, man. All right, thanks. Welcome back to Half the Battle. I'm your host, as always, Daniel Levy, and joining me on this very special edition of Half the Battle is Antonina Shevchenko. Antonina, welcome to Half the Battle. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hello, everybody. Thank you for the invitation. Very pl uh, pleased. So uh, I assume you just finished training, huh? You're a little bit tired? Yes, yes. I just, like, one minute ago I finished. So I'm still in the gym. So I'm sorry if I will be a little uh, talking weird. <laughs> so, I mean, did you just do some sparring? You do some cardio or what? Uh, yes, we started with warm, warming up. Then we did uh, some technical work. Then we did sparring, then we did bags, <laughs> then we did some cardio for cut a little bit weight. So we worked two hours, and I'm still here. Wow. Well, Antonina, <laughs> I really appreciate you taking the time after a serious workout. <laughs> no, it's a really, really pleasure. <laughs> so I got a question for you. I mean, when you uh, do your stretching, because I know stretching is a very important part of what you do. Do you usually do it before you train or after? Uh, both. I do it before for warming up to prepare my body, to prepare my legs uh, to kick high. So, and I do it after training to to come down, come down. Now, is it usually the same exact stretches, or are there particular ones you do before and particular ones you do after? Um, it could be the same. It could be different. So I have some exercise, different exercise for stretching, but uh, it doesn't matter. It could be the same, could be different. Uh, the important is to do stretching. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So let me ask you this. Obviously, you know, everyone that interviews you, they all ask you about how, you know, you started when you were seven and all this. But what I want to know, Antonina, is when did you first have that competitive spirit? Competitive spirit? I think from very early again. So I started to train at seven. At eight, I already compete, competed in a different uh, competition, so I have my first nation, national title for, uh, to weight weight category of, of uh, 35 kilos. So I was, uh, I think, like nine or ten. So I started at eight already competing, and of course, my mom was um, doing everything to educate me to uh, improve my spirit, my competitive spirit. 
Wow. Now, Antonina, that's amazing that you've been competing since you were eight years old. How How is your body held up? What kinds of things have you done to make sure you stay healthy so you can still compete at the highest level? Uh, yes, it's very important to to be healthy during this this way because fighter, it's the uh, most important thing to, to be healthy. So um, our coach was... Um, uh, was doing everything for us, so of course we uh, uh, on the training on the trainings we work with protection, head protector, um, shin guards, uh, uh, for elbows protection for knees, everything. And um, um, so our, my coach Pavel Fedotov, with whom I train in more, more than 20 years, he knows about me everything, and he knows when to push and when to, uh, to give me some rest. Yeah, that's very, very important. Now, Antonina, I mean, when you fight at eight years old, I mean, were you guys, were there rules in those fights where you can't strike to the head or was it a straight up fight? Um, uh, actually, I started from uh, Taekwondo, uh, from Taekwondo ITF. So my first competition, first, first competition started um, from Taekwondo. So, of course, it was full contact uh, with high kicks uh, to the head to the face uh, and body. O of course, it was everything. So I had and my nose broken, <laughs> <laughs> my lips. Uh, so sometimes it was hard, but um, I'm really appreciate to my family, my mother, my my coach, to to keep me in the in this way in this way to never allow not allow me to give up. Now, when you take blows like that to the head at such a young age, I mean, how, how, do you, how do you deal with that personally? Because I know, you know, I've never competed at a world-class level like yourself, but I have sparred many times. I know what it's like to get hit in the face, but I, I'm, you know, I'm 26 years old. How could you do that at eight years old? What was it like for you? I think for children, it's, um, it's uh, easier for, uh, than for adults. Because children, they like received, they cry something, and then, then forgot about everything. Yeah, no, exactly. Now, uh, we're going to talk about your career a little bit, but I want to know, what kinds of things do you like to do outside of fighting? I mean, do you have any other passions or hobbies? Um, yes, uh, of course. I, I like very much practice shooting with pistol, so I compete <laughs> in um, uh uh, this shooting of uh, Federation IDPA and IPSC, uh, so these pistols, this I like very much. So I do this, and I like travel a lot. Uh, I like sea, ocean, <laughs> so explore uh, ma many different uh, places, beautiful places on the coast. Wow, so you're uh, competitive in everything you do, huh? Um. Probably yes, it's a spirit, a spirit from, uh, that I have from very young. Yeah, so you mentioned you like traveling. I mean, what's uh, your favorite place that you've been to? You know, do you like beaches? Do you like mountains? What What, what do you like, Antonina? Uh, um, yes, I, I like nature in in general. So uh, now we live in Peru, and uh, it's a be very beautiful country. So it has a uh, coast ocean very beautiful places so it has um, mountains also and it has very wild place amazon jungle amazon river so wild but beautiful also and uh, of course we train a lot of time in uh, thailand in islands um, in phuket island and uh, tiger muay thai gym so phuket island and all islands of thailand it's a very beautiful place and seeds very very nice and uh, now we are here in texas and uh here i like uh, to stay very much too so we go traveling to explore galveston texas city and many places on the coast wow from russia to peru to texas first of all i gotta know what was the motivation for you like going to peru um, uh, first, it, w it was uh, traveling, then it started uh, work because um, it was 
eight years ago, and we um, went to Peru to develop Muay Thai, and uh, we did uh, seminars. We was teaching, actually, this. Wow. Now, uh, Antonina, I mean, obviously you fought in Muay Thai. You fought in kickboxing, you know, K1. What do you like the best? I mean, what's uh, your favorite way to compete in a stand-up martial art? Um, I think it's Muay Thai, complete Muay Thai style with all um, complete Muay Thai rules with uh, unlimited clinching, elbows, knee. So Muay Thai, I think I prefer mass uh, more. But um, uh, I'm very comfortable in K1 also. So when I start to prepare exactly for K1, I, I really enjoy it uh, too. And uh, I like to compete boxing and taekwondo. So um, I think all uh, st- stand-up styles I like. So you mentioned you like Muay Thai the best, and the good news is you're about to fight at Lion Fight. Are you excited for that? Uh, yes, of course, and um, I'm very happy to compete in Muay Thai, uh, in line Muay Thai promotions. So it's the best, one of the best uh, Muay Thai promotions in the world. I'm very happy, very proud, and I'm looking forward to my fight uh, July 8th. Oh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it as well. Now, if you look at your record, I mean, you're the definition of a winner. You've won so many fights. But you have faced defeat before, and I always say it's it's important for every fighter to take that first loss so they can come back, evolve, grow, and become a better fighter. So how important was it for you to take your first loss, Antonina? Mm, It was not like very important or very not important. It just happened. So I think it's it's not necessary to give this, this importance. So, wow, you first time lost, it's something important. No, it just just passed. You just improve yourself and go compete uh, uh, forward. Nothing more. Well, I mean, since then, you're on a massive win streak. So, I mean, you had to have learned something, right? Uh, yes, of course. Well, hey, I promised I wasn't going to ask any questions about your sister, but I only have one. How badly is she going to kick Holly Holmes' ass? Uh, Valentina now, she's preparing very hard. So we have training uh, together with her. So she trains Muay Thai, everything, wrestling, Muay Thai, um, ground, everything. So, and um, I think she's ready for this big fight. I know Holly Holm is a strong fighter, but Valentina a strong fighter. So she, every time she fights with only strong girls, girl uh, fighters, and so I think Valentina has everything to win this fight. I agree with you, and she's being counted out. She's a big underdog, so I'll definitely uh, be rooting for her. But I got to ask about you. I mean, have you ever considered competing in MMA? Um, I before I competed already, so I have fights in MMA, uh, but it was um, a little uh, long time ago, like ten ten years ago. Then I fight it more in uh, stand-up uh, rules. And, uh, of course, I train. I still train. I keep training. So we train the same coach with Valentina, Paolo Fedota. So he trains to me and Valentina in wrestling and grappling. But for competing, I still focus uh, in Muay Thai. Now, I know what, what happens in the gym stays in the gym. But uh, how many guys have you knocked out in your life? <laughs> I really didn't count this <laughs> because uh, I train my whole life, so I have trainings uh, every day, sometimes twice a day. So I have very little days that I rest. So I don't know. <laughs> there you go. That's a very classy response. Well, Antonina, I want to wish you the best of luck at your fight, at Lion Fight. And thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me right here, right now on Half the Battle. Let my audience know where they can follow you on social media. Uh, thank you very much. Yes, on Instagram, I'm like Antonina Muay Thai. Twitter is uh, KO Antonina. And uh, Facebook, it's Antonina Shevchenko. So uh, KO Antonina, are we expecting a KO at Lion Fight? Thank you very much. We'll see. I'm training hard, so I have very uh, big uh, motivations for this fight. So I think uh, I will do all my 100%.
Well, we cannot wait to see it. And Antonina, thank you so much again for the time and have a great day. Thank you very much. You too. Have a great day. Welcome back to Half the Battle. I'm your host as always, Daniel Levy, and joining me on this very special Lion Fight edition of Half the Battle is Kai Hollenbeck. Kai, welcome to Half the Battle, man. Hey, thanks for having me, man. Absolutely, man. It's my pleasure. So, obviously, you're taking on Mark Holst at Foxwoods on Axis TV. How pumped are you for the fight, dude? I'm excited, man. I got a really good camp going this year. We have, uh, or this, this year, this, this time around, we have, uh, uh, Gaston and, and uh, Kev and all of them helped me out. A couple other guys from the gym. We also have uh, Lump from Crime, who's uh, if, if you know anything about Muay Thai, you know he's one of the best in the game ever was. Ever. He's a superstar. He's here helping us get, helping me get ready. So, I mean, I'm feeling good, feeling strong, feeling ready. What's it like training with a dude like that? Say it one more time. What's it like training with a legend like that? <sighs> I mean, he, he definitely makes you realize that your game can be a lot higher than it than it is like my game right now is a lot higher than it was before and it'll continue to grow the more i train with him because he he pushes you to that new level i mean there's that steel sharp and steel mentality where he's definitely sharpening me making me tougher so it's good so i mean like is he good about not handing out too much damage i mean how hard do you guys go when you spar uh he's he's pretty controlled i mean that's the thing we can you can learn a lot more from somebody if, if you guys are going at 75%, 50%. You try to try to blast each other 100% all the, whole, all the time. You don't see anything. You you go to that, that defense mode where you're just trying to survive, and there's no there's no learning process. Like, you do 50%, you see some stuff, you, you develop some things, you, you start to get better. That way, when you do kick it up to 100%, you're actually able to utilize the techniques and stuff you've been training. Yeah, I 100% agree, man. I mean, that's how you learn and get better. But let me ask you this. So when you are going, you know, 75% and then it's time to turn it up to 100 in an actual fight, I mean, what's that transition like? Uh, you know, it's just uh, everything. You you kind of have that understanding that there, when you're training, you got 75, there's, there's, a ex, there's more you can give. And, like, you know that when the time comes, you'll be able to kick that in, especially with the adrenaline that you, that you get from every fight. I mean, when I when I go in, I know that when I when that adrenaline kicks in, I, I'm gonna have to I, I get to relax and just kind of let things happen because I don't have to. It's not like I'm forcing that extra 25 percent. It's gonna come whether I want it to or not. So I, I don't need to try super hard. I can keep that kind of 75 percent mentality, and my body's gonna kick it to 100 without me having to do very much. I think the people that try too hard are the people that can't execute things that they need to execute when the fight time comes. People that are trying too hard for a knockout or trying too hard to land their combination end up missing it because they're trying too hard. Yeah, that makes total sense, man. Now, cool little uh, backstory about this fight is both of you guys have fought in MMA as well. And it's interesting because oftentimes with uh, kickboxers or Muay, Muay Thai fighters, they don't have that much success in MMA, but you actually had a 5-1 and one record, and you won most of your fights via submission. Yeah, uh, I first saw, when I first did, started doing MMA, I was actually, uh, I, I had my brown belt in jiu-jitsu, but um, the more I did, the more I did kickboxing, the more opportunities presented themselves. They had, the uh, ability to go travel overseas and fight international was, was huge for one of my reasons for wanting to do it. Plus, the fan, the fan base, I feel, is a lot more uh, knowledgeable in and muay thai like people have it takes a real like there's a real huge fan base of people that actually have an understanding of what's happening it's not just people looking for people to knock each other out so um those were some big factors when i my my not my submissions are kind of deceptive because it was usually i'd hit him with an uppercut and stun him or i'd hit him with a roundhouse and kind of stun somebody and and drop and then i just lock in a guillotine or lock in a, a rear naked or something that was that was already, I mean, it was, the guy was damaged so much with the striking that the, the submission was easy at that point. So it's a little deceptive that I have, I have a lot of submissions on my, on my resume for MMA because they were, they were basically knockouts that just finished with the submission. That's awesome, man. Yeah, I need to go back and watch some of those fights. Uh, do you ever plan on competing in MMA ever again? You never know, man. Um, you know, Bellator's... Uh, Something that I was thinking about. They started a kickboxing organization. We'll see if I ever make that transition over to kickboxing, and if if I do, we'll talk with Scott Coker or anything like that, and see if potentially down the line I could do MMA again. I mean, I, I never rule anything out. I still train jujitsu every once in a while, but Muay Thai right now is my passion, and and uh, yeah, I mean, I try and I try and stay diverse in every everything I do, but you never know. I mean, I, I would never count it out. You never know. Yeah. Now, obviously, you've knocked dudes out with elbows, you know, spinning elbows, with hooks, with knees. What's your favorite way to to knock someone out? 
Uh, the easiest, I guess. No. Um, <laughs> the, uh, uh, I think um, I really don't have, I don't really have like a, a special move that I like to use. I mean, I spin a lot. They used to make t-shirts spin to win and all kinds of stuff. But um, I think just whatever it is, whatever it presents itself, I think that's why you have to diversify your abilities and, and have a bunch of different tools in the toolboxes. You never know which one it's going to be. It's going to be the one that's the most effective, especially against someone like someone like Holst who has a big arsenal as well. He's got a Muay Thai background. He's got an MMA background, a Jiu Jitsu background. So he's got a lot of tools in his toolbox as well. So you never know which one it's going to be. That's going to be the one to do it. Yeah, no, absolutely, man. And uh, what was it like for you to go three rounds with a guy like Nyeki Holskin? Because obviously that's a a big name in the sport, and it was probably a great experience for you. Oh, it was. Yeah, Nyeki was. Uh, I've lost three times in my career, and. Uh, They've always been a higher level guys. I lost to Giorgio Petrosian. I lost to when I tore my ACL. I lost to Nikki, and I lost to uh, uh, Risty, Andy Risty, and all those guys are really solid dudes. Nikki is by far probably one of the toughest fights I've ever had in my life. That guy, he has a, uh, he kind of has a mentality like when you fight him, you kind of see it in his eyes. He's like, listen, I'm going to beat you. Like, there's, I'm going to beat you. I eventually I'm going to hit you with something that's going to hurt, and you're going to go down. But uh, yeah, he's he was uh, it was definitely a a test for my abilities and I felt like I matched it. We, we went to a decision. Um, but yeah, he's a, he's a tough cat, man. He's a, he's a big cat too. Um, a ton of respect for Nicky, man. I, I, I love that. He's one of my favorite fighters to watch. I know every time I see him fight, I get excited because he's a superstar to watch. And I hope that people have that same idea about me when I fight. I hope that I bring that excitement as well. Oh yeah, you definitely do. And yeah, Nicky's definitely a, a legend of the sport, man. Now I got to ask you, I mean, why do you think it's a, uh so hard for a lot of kickboxers to transition to MMA. Like, for example, Joe Schilling, you know, he's considered, in many people's opinion, to be one of the best kickboxers out there, but it didn't work out in MMA. Um, you know, uh, Joe's, a, Joe's a superstar, man. We've, we've known each other for a long time. We have the Can't Stop Crazy crew that we have started, that he started a long time ago, and, and everybody, uh, we got involved with that. But uh, Joe's an animal, man. I mean, Joe's one of those guys who is he'll push it 110%, and he'll do the MMA, even though his... His ground game isn't as as developed as other people's. I mean, he's the kind of guy who doesn't give a shit, and he'll go in there and, and smack you in the mouth because he's he's a he's an animal. Um, I think the reason it didn't it didn't pan out for him for that is uh, I mean, not saying that it hasn't. He he still I think he still competes in in MMA um, every once in a while. But uh, I think he's he's just one of those guys who has a very very solid striking game. So people try to take that away from him in terms of like trying to get takedowns and. And uh, and then expose the weaknesses that he does have in his game, but uh, again, I mean, he's one of those guys who he he might have lost one or two, but he's he's the same kind of guy who can he can win. The, it's it's a, a hair a hair between winning and losing. If he hits you with his if he gets you with a punch, and he's going to drop you. If you end up getting takedown, and then it can be a different story. But there's he's one of those guys that you put him against anyone in the world, and and he has a good chance to win. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, he's a legend for a reason. And, uh, you know, when you watch him in glory or in his kickboxing fights, I mean, he's really in his element and you can really see the art that he brings to the table. So, yeah, man. And uh, so, I mean, what's going to go down when you fight Hulse, man? I mean, are you expecting uh, it to go the distance or are you going out there to knock him out? Yeah, it's going to be five rounds because that's how Lion Fight does a five. So, but um, I, I never, I mean, I never expect a knockout. I train for, I train for five rounds because it's going in my line. It's always going to go five rounds, regardless of if it ends early or, or, uh, or what. I take, I take pride in, in, uh, in my cardio and my ability to, to beat people. A lot of times when I, I fought guys when I first was getting started, I fought guys that should have won, but I won because I out cardioed them. And I think that's, that's always been my game plan. Is if even if I don't have the knockout, even if I'm not, I don't take you out with a knockout. I'm going to take you to deep water and drown you because I'm I'm going to go 100% all five rounds and if you can't if you can't keep up you're going to drown and nothing's easier than you could fight a world class athlete and get them tired and they you could put an amateur against them and they beat them anybody who's exhausted doesn't have what it doesn't have what it takes you could put I mean take anybody your your son or something like that if you took him to deep water and he wasn't conditioned you could put an amateur against somebody like that and win just because of that exhaustion will take over and your body just can't keep up. So with that said, you prefer the five round fights. I actually do. I think, uh, it really showcases somebody's ability. Like when you can, when you can continually wear, wear somebody, like take, wear them out, like learn their style first, second round or come out hard and, and see if they're going to wilt or if they're going to fold or 
if they're going to be that kind of person that stands up and, and tries to go all five with you. I think it's, it's more, uh, it's more rewarding when you have a deeper fight, like when you get to a deep round fight and you get to see somebody's true character come out. Cause I mean, you'll never, you'll never know. You can lie to everybody else about your skill and the, your ability and, and your cardio. But when somebody takes you to that deep water, if you're not ready for it, it, there's no one that you can, you can't fake your way out of it. I mean, everybody knows that you're not ready. So I think one of those, those deep round fights kind of tend to show who really is. It's not just a lucky punch or, or, or somebody didn't catch you with a, an early round knockout. They, they took you to that deep water and showed you that, yeah, I'm, I'm better than you and I can prove it because I took you all the way through. Yeah. Now talk to me about the Muay Thai mentality of uh, facing defeat and overcoming adversity because with all the Muay Thai guys that I've spoken to, it's always about, you know, you guys want to test yourself. You guys want to find the toughest challenges. Whereas with a lot of uh, boxing guys and MMA guys, you know, they might have padded records. Yeah. I mean, there's always, there's, I mean, any sport has padding. Like, there's, there's guys in Muay Thai that do the same thing. But I think the majority of the fighters in Muay Thai, boxers, a lot of times boxers do it for money because there's a lot of money to be had in it. A lot of times MMA guys will do it because they think that they're going to get sponsors and there's money to be had. Muay Thai, there's not a lot of money coming in. Like, it's, it's not, that's not the main goal. Like, it's not to get famous. I'm not going to be, like, I'm, I'm pretty well known for Muay Thai in America and I'm, I'm known by a very small portion of people. So to me, fame isn't the important part. Like, that's not the issue. The, the issue is pushing yourself and testing yourself. And I think that's what a lot of Muay Thai guys have in their, like, their mentality is that same kind of mentality. So I think that that show, shows in their, in their style when they fight and, and they want to fight the best because what's the point otherwise? Like, why, why try and test yourself if you're going to test yourself against someone that's a crumb bum? I mean, you want to go against somebody that's going to make you better and really test you show you who you really are underneath and again like i said you can lie to a bunch of people and say oh i'd beat that guy i'd beat this guy but you know i mean in your heart you know if you can fight that guy or if you want to fight that guy if you really want to do this or if you really want to fight there's people that talk about fighting and they want to do it and then if the time comes and they realize that they just want to be they want to train and they want the they want the recognition but they don't actually want to get in the ring so i think the guys that really do want to do that and really do want to get in the ring are the guys that are trying to fight those high level guys and trying to get to that place where they're testing themselves every time yeah, exactly. I mean, I couldn't say it better myself, man. And, you know, you've actually, uh, you haven't just fought in the States. You've traveled all over the world to compete. I mean, is that was that part of your dream? Yeah, that was, I mean, like I said, that's why I originally started doing Muay Thai was because uh, I got offered to fight in China and, and uh, Malaysia, like Japan, all over. So given that opportunity, I, um, I jumped at it. And then that's, like, MMA was in my head. I was like, all right, MMA is what I'm going to do. And then somebody started offering me international fights and I was like hell yeah I'll go fight in China if I get to go free trip to China and all I have to do is fight somebody and I get a free trip yeah perfect and then so and then it just kind of went from there and and uh I, I mean I've been blessed with the ability to travel to Italy Holland Switzerland I mean everywhere you can you can name it's it's been something I would never be able to do without the sport so I'm super blessed and super grateful that I was given the opportunity to do that now is there somewhere in particular that you haven't been that you'd like to go to compete uh, Australia, I thought would always be fun. There was always, uh, there was always talks of like John Wayne Parr and myself or, or one of the guys from Australia. I always thought that would be fun. Uh, it'd be fun to go out there and, and, uh, fight some of that. There's a ton of good guys out in Australia and, and the, uh, and I think it'd be just be fun to be out there. It'd be nice to get out to a different continent every once in a while. So you've actually fought in Lion Fight for Muay Thai and Glory for kickboxing. And, uh, you know, a lot of people don't know the difference between the two. And, uh, you know, obviously the, you know, art of eight limbs and lion fight. But, I mean, for you as a fighter, you know, w w what does that difference feel like fighting in those two? Uh, it's a lot. It, mostly it's the um, the judging is different. And then the, the clinch game is a lot. I mean, adds a whole different element. Being, uh, being that, I mean, my, my clinch from jiu-jitsu and stuff like that, my clinch is, is okay. I'm it's better than most. And then... Uh, my uh, my striking is 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 adequate, but I think Muay Thai Muay Thai presents itself with more options for me, and I think the more options I have, my style is uh, the more options I have, the more tricky I can be, the more confusing I can be, the more I can I can win, the more I can the more I can confuse the person I'm going against, the more I can I can uh, execute my plan. So I think Muay Thai allows me that ability a little bit more than kickboxing. I love them both; they're both fun both ways to test myself, but I think if I had to pick one over the other, Muay Thai, I think the more weapons I have, the better I am. 
Yeah, absolutely. And now, do you ever want to run it back with uh, Petrosian or Andy Risty? Uh, Risty, I would love to run it back against because I uh, it was a pretty. Um, I had a, I had a not a, not the best fight camp leading up to it. Not taking anything away from him, uh, he's a, he's a monster. He's a great fighter. But I think if I had had a better camp, I would have I would have had a better performance. And uh, the, if anybody watched the fight, it was a pretty quick fight, and I didn't, I didn't feel like myself going into it. So it would be nice to run that one back. Petrosian, uh, he's he's a superstar. I would love to. I mean, again, test yourself. You're always going to test yourself. I'd love to run it back with him as well. And, and I tore my ACL in that fight. Uh, he dropped me with a, a hook that kind of, when I fell, I fell awkward and tore my ACL. So, I mean, can't take anything away from anybody. It was, it was a good fight on his part. And I would love, but again, testing yourself, always want to test yourself. So people that have beat me, you always want to try and, like, uh, get those wins back, you know. So I would run it back with pretty much anybody. That's one thing I've always prided myself on is I don't walk away. I don't run away from fights. If somebody says, hey, you want to fight this guy? Yes, of course I do. Why wouldn't I? So... If uh, if the opportunity presented itself, I would I would love to jump at it, but yeah, have to now, wait for that. Where does that uh, mentality come from, man? Because a lot of guys, you know, if they take a loss like you did against Risty, where you don't even get the chance to fight, you know, they'll quit the sport. But for you, you put your head down, and now you're on a win streak. Yeah, I mean, it's just you're only as good as uh, as I was. Everyone says you're only as good as your last fight. I always think you're only as good as your next fight. So, I mean, you win a fight, it doesn't doesn't make you any better or worse than you were the day before i mean the only thing that's going to make you better or worse is putting your ass in the gym and getting to work you can you can sit there and do nothing and and get worse or you can get yourself in the gym and get to work and and improve every day and i think that that's always been my mentality is yeah you might have a bad day you might have a bad loss and you can sit there and say oh that's it for me or you can get back up and push forward and i think the latter is always what i try to do i was trying to get forward get myself back up pick myself up and, and keep moving forward make myself better every day yeah, that's the way to go, man. Well, Kai, I want to thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me right here, right now on Half the Battle. And before we get out of here, man, what's your favorite Thai food dish? Uh, uh, Thai to you is probably my go-to. Every time after a, after training, if I if I don't have a fight coming up and I want to get a little fat kid, I go Pat to you. It's pretty. That's my that's my number one. I would say Pat Thai, but I feel like everybody would say that. So, <laughs> so uh, let the audience know where they can follow you on social media, man. Uh, yeah, so my, uh, my Instagram is Kai Hole, K-Y-H-O-L-L, um, and that's the same as my Twitter. Uh, I'm, I'm never on Twitter, to be honest, man. Instagram every once in a while. Like, if you want to follow me, that's the one to follow. Uh, Facebook, just, yeah, my name, Kai Hole. Kai, thanks again for taking the time, my man. All right, thanks a lot, man. appreciate it. All right, peace out. Welcome back to Half the Battle. I'm your host as always, Daniel Levy, and joining me on this very special Lion Fight edition of Half the Battle is Mark Holst. Mark, welcome to Half the Battle, man. Thank you so much for having me. Much appreciated. Absolutely, man. So you're taking on Kai at Lion Fight 30. How do you feel about the fight, dude? I feel amazing. Uh, I've been training really hard. All the students have been helping me out a lot, and uh, the whole team's behind me here. And uh, yeah, I really lucked out on the uh, line fight, you know, giving me a call and giving me a shot. You know, I know I'm a replacement, so uh, so I'm going to, uh, you know, me and Kyle are going to steal the show and uh, we're going to put on some, uh, some uh, really good Muay Thai fight. Dude, you got to tell me about how your uh, Muay Thai career started because it's funny. When I heard that I was interviewing Mark Holst, I was like, hold on a second. That name sounds familiar. So I saw, <laughs> oh, so you used to fight in the UFC. I remember a couple of your fights and I have, I had no idea. You were a kickboxer, and then I saw that you knocked out Kevin Ross in under a minute. So I was like, "Oh, so he really made that transition?" Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like, uh, you know, I was always a striker. I started with the karate, and then I, I uh, evolved into the the Northern American kickboxing, and then finally to Muay Thai. And uh, Muay Thai and Brazilian Jiu Jitsu have always been like going back and forth, and I've done a lot of you know mixed martial art competitions. But uh, but man, like I fought you know countless times in uh, in Thailand and. Uh, uh, Muay Thai rules is uh, is definitely a really fun uh, fun way to scrap. <laughs> Who do you think kick harder, the Dutch or the Thai? The Thais. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's it like training over there, man? I mean, because you get really immersed into the culture. Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely like a, a big culture shot just from the the country, right? Being there and and, and very, very different culture, but such genuine, generally nice people. And uh, the the work ethic that they have, and the training, and the passion they have—it's their national sport, you know. So they they love it, they breathe it, and uh, man, there's like 
you know, there's more Muay Thai fighters, uh, you know, in the world than hockey players, you know, like it's, uh, there's, there's a lot. <laughs> oh yeah, it's so serious. It's definitely their thing, yeah, it's serious stuff. What's your favorite Thai food dish? My favorite pasta dish, I'll no, go with... Uh, no, 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 uh, your favorite Thai food dish. Oh, Thai food dish. Uh, I love the pad Thai, you know, the green the green coconut curry is good too. Um, uh, the Tom Yum soup too, that's a good one, you know, if you like spicy. I can't handle spicy too much. My, my first word when I, I went to Thailand, I learned how to say not spicy. So I got to say it in my pet, and that means not spicy. But still, every time they bring me the dish, uh, the food is like spicy as hell, so... I love spicy, but my stomach doesn't deal with it good. <laughs> yeah, well, hey, I'm learning new words here on Half the Battle, man. So, dude, when you took on Kevin Ross a while back, I mean, you were completely counted out. I think everyone was like, oh, this is the MMA guy. He's being brought in to lose. And then you knock him out in under a minute. I mean, what was that like, dude? Uh, that was good. You know, like, uh, you know, I caught a lot of weight for that. I had a lot of weight advantage on uh, Kevin. I know he brought that up a few times, and uh, I'll definitely admit that. And he stepped up last minute. So, uh, but definitely, you know, he's in in a, a weight a, a few weight classes under me, and and we went at it. I saw I saw that I hurt him with uh, a cross, so I just pounced on him. I flirted. Yeah, it felt amazing uh, to to get that win and uh, be able to fight uh, on uh, this show XFA in Vegas. I, I love the the fight show. I love to fight in Vegas. That's my favorite thing, definitely. <laughs> Was that one of the first moments where you knew, like, hey, I can do this kickboxing thing? Oh, yeah. Well, I knew before that, right? Like, any time that I do a lot of MMA fights, you know, I like to standing and, and you know, bang it out and uh, work my striking and stuff like that, sprawl and brawl. And, uh, you know, I, I've done, before Kevin Ross, too, like, I've done countless of uh, Muay Thai fights. So I had I had good experience on my feet standing. Um, so, uh, so, yeah, like, a lot of people know me as a striker, you know, if, if I fight MMA or if I fight Muay Thai. I think, I, I, to be honest, yeah, I think maybe some people don't think I'm a Muay Thai guy, but, uh, man, like, I've been to Thailand six times. <laughs> uh, I've fought in Thailand. I fought on, for the King's birthday in Thailand. I fought in Lumpini, the famous, you know, uh, Muay Thai stadium. So, like, I have I have Muay Thai skills, and I'm, I'm a Muay Thai guy. Well, I got to ask you what it was like fighting in front of the King, but real quick, man, you know, on your MMA record, you actually have more wins via submission than you do via knockout. That's right. Well, they all try to take me down, and and they do because my wrestling sucks. But <laughs> I'm working on my wrestling real hard uh, for the last uh, two three years at the Montreal Wrestling Club. You know, with the guys like George and uh, and Rory and all the guys there. Uh, but uh, but definitely like for the MMA fights, you know, like I, I got a lot of submissions just because of my instructor. You know, my professor uh, from from uh, Team Handle Gracie. Right, we're a very reputable uh, Jiu Jitsu team, and we're a very strong team uh, Jiu Jitsu team in Canada. And uh, my my professor Pat Coogan taught me, you know, the triangle choke and the quinoa, my favorite, you know. So I, I, you know, once I get I get taken down, I can really, you know, threaten the submissions. I love working the subs, and uh, you know, I'm a purple belt under uh, Professor Pat. So uh, yeah, that's how I got all those uh, those those submission wins. <laughs> that's badass, dude. You mentioned you've been training with uh, George and Rory. So you've been training with uh, Raymond Daniels too? Uh no, no, I haven't had a chance yet. Okay, but what's it like training with George and Rory? Oh, amazing! Uh, I've done I've done some MMA rounds with George and some a lot of wrestling too with Rory and George. And oh man, they take me down every like you know ten seconds. They're they're amazing athletes, and you know what's great about both of them is they they always give me some tips. You know, they help me back up, and uh, you know they give me like oh Mark, you know I shouldn't be able to take you down every ten seconds. I'm like okay. <laughs> But uh, but definitely, like, uh, I love wrestling, and uh, I really, like, submerged myself uh, as a wrestling lifestyle for the last few years, and I find, uh, yeah, I'm loving it now, and uh, especially with the help of the, all the guys at the Montreal Wrestling Club. But, uh, but yeah, that's for my MMA training camps, you know? So now I've switched gears, and uh, I'm uh, 100% in Muay Thai. I'm really owning. I, I love I love Muay, getting ready for Muay Thai fights because you only have one, you know, one uh, art to, uh, to get sharp and one... Uh, one skill set really is, is striking, you know, doing damage, standing. So uh, I'm I'm ready for that. I can't wait to fight uh, Kai. Yeah, and you're not fighting any slouch either. You're taking on Kai Hollenbag, and he comes to fight every single That's time. Right. Yeah, as always, you know, like last time, line fight again. You know, they needed a guy for Cosmo Alexander, and I stepped up. So I think they know that I'm a I'm a fighter through and through, and I won't back down from any challenge. And uh, you know, I'm excited to fight Kai. He's he's very, very uh, 
experience and uh you know high up in the in the fight ranking uh, all over the world international scene so and he's a very aggressive fighter just like me so uh yeah we're definitely going to put on a good show you know what was that experience like for you fighting cosmo oh man the guy is big i fought him 155 i couldn't believe he's bigger and taller than me i was like nobody's bigger and taller than me at 155 maybe like you know more broad like I fought at 155. I fought a lot of short, stocky guys, you know, little muscle sharks. At least I had to reach on them, and I was really long, you know. So, but Cosmo, not only he was like, you know, full of muscles and, and jacked. On top of that, he was he was as tall as me, and uh, it was definitely, uh, you know, like I felt his power definitely. And uh, you know, like you know, I went to decision. I lost the decision. I thought I came back in the fifth round, but definitely he got you know three out of five rounds, I think, and. Uh, you know, I, I think I, I maybe got the first and the last round. I came out uh, strong in the last. So, but that's what happens when you leave it to the judges. And you know, again, it's Muay Thai. He was he was pressuring me forward. You know, he's controlling the ring more, and that's so huge in Muay Thai. You know, to to be able to stalk your opponent down. And I was being a little bit too elusive, and and uh, I think I should have clinched up more with him. And and uh, you know, well. Would have, should have, could have, right? But I, th- I, it was an honor to fight Cosmo Alexander. He's such a huge name, and I think we put on a really good fight and a good main event. And uh, and then, uh, yeah, you know, my hot hat off uh, goes to him. Yeah, you must have learned a lot from that fight, dude. And I gotta ask you, I mean, how do you feel about the lion fight, five round fights instead of three? Uh, yeah, I like that. Yeah, lion fight. Yeah, that's what I fought Cosmo with uh, five rounds, also. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. But uh, yeah, the five round fight, that's, that's Muay Thai, you know, there's no such thing as three rounds in, in Muay Thai. Uh, same thing with Muay Thai, you have to fight with the elbow. The elbow is such a game changer. If, if you're fighting under five rounds, if you're fighting, you know, modified, you know, like kickboxing or whatever, or, you know, like no elbows or no knees or no clinching, that's not Muay Thai. You're not doing the art of Muay Thai. When you go to see in Thailand, the Thais fight each other like that. They, it's all about the clinching, the knees and the elbows and... It's all about that five-round fight. You know, the first two rounds are, you know, like they say, relax, you know, sabai, sabai. And then the third, fourth, and fifth, that's when they ramp it up and they get excited. And also, you know, that's where the crowd starts to put their bets down, right? So yeah. <laughs> that's, the, that's the Muay Thai culture, right? So I, I, Lion Fight's doing a great job putting on great fights and big promotions, and they're definitely the most prestigious Muay Thai uh, fight league in, in North America. And uh, it's a big honor for me, and I'm really happy to, to be back on the show. Can you talk about that Muay Thai mindset and mentality for me? Because I feel like a lot of the Muay Thai fighters, they have totally different mindsets than uh, than MMA fighters. I mean, for example, when you guys face defeat, you look at it like, you know, you were trying to test yourself and you're trying to fight better fighters and you're trying to go out there, come back and get better. Whereas some guys, you know, they take defeat the wrong way. But all the Thai fighters I've talked to, they take defeat like champions. Oh, big time. They don't even count. Like, if you ask a Thai fighter from Thailand, like, okay, like, how many fights you have, they'll be like 200, 300, you know, some maybe even 400. And then you're like, okay, win, lose. And the, they don't even know. They don't even care. It's all about experience, the lifestyle. They fight like two, three times a week over there. And I've had a trainer that fought one night, it went five round decision, drove to another village to fight on a festival fight at another stadium for another five round and he won both fights like who does that you know what i mean like in in canada like we have our kids like doing hockey games like crazy like every you know every weekend kind of thing in thailand they fight muay thai every weekend you know tuesday thursday saturday right they they fight 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 and they, that's why they start so young you know around eight or nine years old and they just have that that uh, that mentality that it doesn't matter if you win or lose as long as you're learning and getting that experience and the belt. Hence, why they don't even count their win loss ratio, you know. And uh, I find like a lot of you know North Americans or you know like foreigners or whatever they they're so focused on their on their record and so on and so forth, which is okay, you know. If you're you know you want to build a good record, obviously everybody wants to win more than they lose, but. The Thai mentality, I find, from what I've seen when I was down there, is they, don't, they, they, they fight their hearts out, and, you know, if they lose, they lose. If they win, they win. It doesn't matter. They don't even count. They count how many fights they have. <laughs> they don't count how many wins or loss. It's uh, different. It's very, very different, the mentality, the, the approach that they have. Wow, that's incredible, dude. I'm going to let you go on that note, man. And real quick, before we get out of here, how's your fight with Kai going to go down at Lion Fight 30? 
it's going to be a very aggressive, action-packed fight, and uh, look for look for the early knockout. Awesome, man. We cannot wait. And uh, let the audience know where to follow you on social media, man. Yeah, if you want to follow me, it's um, on Twitter. It's uh, uh, Boots Holst, at Boots Holst. And uh, on Facebook, just uh, Mark Holst, Mark with a K and an Holst, Holst, H-O-L-S-T. And if I can give a, a shout-out to my sponsors, too. Um, I'd like to thank uh, I'd like to thank uh, uh, Neil at the FTA. I'd like to thank uh, Mr. Miyagi, always in my corner, helping me out. And uh, also my, my loving girlfriend, Jenna Campbell, and my mom, uh, Deanne, which uh, I love very much. Hey, Mark, thanks so much for taking the time to speak with me right here, right now on Half the Battle. Good luck in your fight, and have a great day, dude. Thanks for having me, brother. Appreciate it, man. Have a good one. You too, man. Peace. There you have it, folks. The Lion Fight 30 edition of Half the Battle. Thank you so much to Scott Kent, Antonina Shevchenko, Kai Hollenbeck, and Mark Holst for joining me on this very special edition of Half the Battle. Make sure you follow me at Best Fight Picks. Go to bestfightpicks.com and subscribe to Half the Battle on iTunes, SoundCloud, and YouTube. Watch Lion Fight 30 Friday, July 8th on Axis TV. And until the next time, enjoy the fights.